Most designers in the 60s were not known. Uh, the manufacturers sort of ran 7th Avenue and they always kept the designer in the back room. Um, however, it did not happen to me because I couldn't get a job in a back room. So I had saved some money and started out on my own. So I was really known from uh, my, really, my first major collection. Um, they knew about me. The CFDA was necessary because the manufacturers were really running uh, the dress business. And Eleanor Lambert felt there should be an organization of only designers. So the first uh, 50 members of uh, CFDA were really a group that she had gotten, that Eleanor Lambert had gotten together, uh, that were all designing designers. Anne Klein and, and Bill Glass and Jeffrey Bean and um, gosh, there were 50 of us, as I said, myself. Uh, but of course, I was just starting out. And, uh, and Bill was really just coming out of the back room. And, um, and Jeffrey also. But we had all, uh, we all were named designers. I think the designers became known because, um, well, they're designers. I mean, they were not uh, making the rules uh, the way the manufacturers were. Uh, they were shooting down all the rules, if you like. They were uh, not going along with the everyday uh, business of running a business. Uh, they were obviously more creative, and they wanted their own forum, and uh, CFDA certainly gave it to them. Well, the 60s was, um, I think, was one of the most exciting, certainly one of the most exciting times of my career because um, everything changed. And, um, you know, the 50s was very elegant, uh, very dressy, uh, women wore hats, white gloves, all the rest of it. Uh, and then suddenly in the 60s, um, you know, there was a, a sexual revolution and uh, feminism uh, began and suddenly skirts were way above the knees and girls felt freer, the music changed and your lifestyle changed and it was fun. We did, you know, short skirts, mini skirts, uh, wonderful fabrics, wonderful embroideries. Um, there was a great um, give and take between Europe and, and America and um, you know, hair was shortened, makeup was different, uh, girls looked different. Uh, they didn't look the way, anything the way they did in the 50s, and certainly nothing the way they looked in the late 70s. So it was a very, and it's interesting to me because people, it seems now, still go back to the 60s. When they want their collections to look upbeat and updated, they always end up doing something from the 60s. In the 70s, of course, you know, drugs became a way of life. Um, and so uh, people were wilder. And I think uh, American clothes certainly showed a uh, kind of sexuality that European clothes were not showing. The 80s for me was um, sort of almost a rebirth of the time of the 60s because there was great flamboyance and of course I loved it because I don't do minimal clothes so, so I loved anything that, that looked grand and great and, and uh, exciting and the 80s was sort of that kind of dressing. We came out of a very dreary period in the 70s, I think, anyway. Clothes looked sort of dowdy and, you know, longer skirts and, and the whole thing just looked dreary to me. And, uh, but then the 80s came and there was color and opulence and uh, women loved the idea of getting dressed up. And, uh, and this thing stopped of going from the office right to dinner. Uh, suddenly, girls went home uh, changed and went on to what they were going to do in the evening. And that was, I thought that was wonderful. The mannish suit came in. I mean, women uh, obviously began to, to feel that they had to 
look like a man, act like a man, to get along in a man's world. And so uh, there was a definite change for, you know, broad shoulders, tailored looking clothes, and trousers, and whatever. Uh, whatever a woman felt at that point that she had to do to be on a competitive uh, level with, uh, with her man. I was not happy in the 90s. I was not a happy camper. I, um, no, but I went ahead and still did what I do. And um, I don't think you can change. I think a designer becomes known for, for a certain look and women come to you for that look. And so um, I couldn't change anyway. I just thought um, minimalism was boring and uh, I think I've proved, been proven right so I hope I hope I've been proven right anyway. I don't know what the future holds because we're in such a down time now. And uh, when I go, I think when, it's not fun to go shopping anymore. Uh, I think it's not fun for the consumer. And uh, shopping used to be like going to the theater. It was a, a magical um, adventure and um, and I think stores in America are sort of boring now. So what, I think when a consumer goes to the store, there's, it's not an exciting moment. It's not uh, a moment filled with joy and, and uh, a, thing, um, a way of saying, oh, I want to buy something because it's such fun to go to this shop. Uh, if you drive up Madison Avenue, all the stores look the same. All the windows look the same. If you go to London and you go to Harrods, it's like going to a circus. You know, it's jam-packed with people. They're all having a good time. And uh, I think that that's our problem. And whether that'll change in the future or not, I don't know. I hope so. <laughs>